Bonjour, bon matin. Nanani, welcome to St. John the Baptist Catholic Church, St. John, North Dakota, the city at the end of the rainbow. Today we celebrate the 15th Sunday in Ordinary Time. This holy sacrifice will be offered to the intentions of all our pro popolo parishioners living this season. I invite you to join me now to pray the Angelus as a prelude to this holy sacrifice. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, and she conceived by the Holy Spirit, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be done to me according to thy word. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And the word was made flesh in the world of us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that we, to whom the incarnation of Christ thy Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection, through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. All glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. All glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. All glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our entrance antiphon. As for me, in justice I shall behold your face. I shall be filled with the vision of your glory. Eternal Father, we offer thee the most precious blood of your divine Son, Jesus, in union with all the Masses celebrated throughout the world today, for all the holy souls in purgatory, for sinners everywhere, for sinners in the universal church, those in our own homes and within our families. Amen. And let's begin this holy sacrifice in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, let us pray. <clears throat> o God, who showed the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path, give all who for the faith they profess are accounted Christians the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ, and to strive after all that does its honor. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, just as from the heavens the rain and snow come down and do not return there till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, 
giving seed to the one who sows and bread to the one who eats. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. My word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. The seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. You have visited the land and watered it. Greatly have you enriched it. God's watercourse are filled and have prepared the grain. The seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. Thus have you prepared the land, drenching its furrows, breaking up its clods, softening with showers, blessing its yield. The seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. You have crowned the year with your bounty, and your paths overflow with a rich harvest. The untilled meadows overflow with it, and rejoicing close the hills. The seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. The fields are garmented with flocks, and the valleys blanketed with grain. They shout and sing for joy. The seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I consider that the sufferings of this present time are as nothing compared with the glory to be revealed for us. For creation awaits with eager expectation. The revelation of the children of God for creation was made subject to futility, not of its own accord, but because of the one who subjected it, in hope that creation itself would be set free from slavery to corruption and share in the glorious freedom of the children of God. We know that all creation is groaning in labor pains even until now. And not only that, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the Spirit, we also groan within ourselves, and we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. The word of the Lord. Lord, may you give my heart and my lips and the Lord. I beg you God to my sister's Lord, may this share with me. Alleluia, alleluia. The seed is the word of God, Christ is the sower. All who come to him will have life forever. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. On that day Jesus went out of the house and sat down by the sea. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat down, and the whole crowd stood along the shore. And he spoke to them at length in parables, saying, A sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seed fell on the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky ground where it had little soil. It sprang up at once because the soil was not deep. But when the sun rose, it was scorched, and it withered for lack of roots. Some seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it. But some seed fell on rich soil and produced fruit, a hundred or sixty or thirtyfold. Whoever has ears ought to hear. The disciples approached them and said, Why do you speak to them in parables? He said to them in reply, Because knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven has been granted to you, but to them it has not been granted. To anyone who has, more will be given, and he will grow rich. From anyone who has not, even what he has will be taken away. This is why I speak to them in parables, because they look, but they do not see and hear, but do not listen or understand. Isaiah's prophecy is fulfilled in them which says, You shall indeed hear, but not understand. You shall indeed look, but never see. Gross is the heart of this people. They will hardly hear with their ears. They have closed their eyes, lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears, and understand with their hearts, and be converted, and I heal them. But blessed are your eyes, because they see, and your ears, because they hear. Amen, I say to you. Many prophets and righteous people long to see what you see, but did not see, and to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. Hear then the parable of the sower. The seed sown on the path is the one who hears the word of the kingdom without understanding it, and the evil one comes and steals away what was sown in his heart. The seed sown on rocky ground is the one who hears the word and receives it at once with joy, but he has no root and lasts only for a time. When some tribulation or persecution comes because of the word, he immediately falls away. 
The seed sown among thorns is the one who hears the word, but then worldly anxiety and the lure of riches choke the word and it bears no fruit. But the seed sown on rich soil is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields a hundred or sixty or thirtyfold. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. I love the line from the Gospel that says, They hear, but they're not listening. Reminds me of a story I heard about Luigi. Luigi said to his wife, Maria, an Italian couple in southern living, Maria, I need a cow. And Maria says, Luigi, you go see Vincenzo, he sell you a cow. So Luigi goes from Gravina de Puglia all the way to Tampa. And he's yelling, Vincenzo, I need to buy a cow. Vincenzo says, ah, Luigi, you, you look and you buy. So Luigi he turns and says, I like this one. Vincenzo says, no, you don't like this one. Luigi says, no, I like this one. Luigi says, man, I tell you, she don't look so good. Luigi he turns and says, you look at me. So Vincenzo says, oh, man, you buy. So he buy the cow. All the way back to Gravi the next day, Luigi got me angry. He run all the way down that road and screamed, me, Vincenzo, Vincenzo. That cow you sell me, she walk her right off of the cliff and she fall down and she die. Vincenzo says, eh, hey, um, ben, Luigi, I tell you, she don't look so good. <laughs> he heard, but he wasn't listening. I think many times that's what we do. We hear, but are we truly listening? And like the rabbis of Jesus' time, Jesus very quickly and often used parables. He told short stories and, and, and images taken from everyday life to convey a hidden truth about the kingdom of God so that they would not only hear, but they would listen like Luigi and Vincenzo. And like the skillful artist, Jesus sketched these memorable pictures with short and simple words. A good image can, can speak more loudly and clearly than many words. Jesus used the ordinary everyday experiences and, and illustrations of life and nature to point to another order of reality that is hidden and yet visible to those who had eyes to see and ears to hear. Jesus communicated with vivid illustrations which they, they capture the imagination of his audience and for us as well, more powerfully than any abstract presentation could. His parables are what would you say? They're, they're like buried treasure, just waiting to, to be discovered. So what can the parable about the seeds and the roots teach us about the kingdom of God? Well, any farmer will attest to the importance of good soil for supplying nutrients for growth. And how does a plant get the necessary food and water that it needs, except through its root system? The sacred scriptures frequently use this image of fruit-bearing plants and trees to convey the principles of spiritual life and death. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. He's like a tree planted by water. It grows deep with its roots. It does not fear when the heat comes, for it's its leaves remain green, and it's not anxious in the year of drought, for it does not cease to bear fruit. How do you and I, how do we listen to God's Word? Are we listening like, like Luigi, or are we listening to Vincenzo? Jesus' parable of the sower is aimed at the, the hearers of his Word. And there are different ways, my brothers and sisters, of accepting God's Word, and they produce different kinds of fruit accordingly. There is the prejudiced hearer who has literally shut his mind. Such a person is unteachable and literally blind to what he or she doesn't want to hear. And then there is the, the shallow, the shallow hearer. He or she fails to think things out or to think them through. They, they lack any depth. They may initially respond with an emotional reaction, but when it wears off, their mind wanders to something else. And another type of hearer is the person who has many interests and cares. 
but who lacks the ability to truly hear and comprehend what is truly important. That kind of a person is too busy to pray or too preoccupied to study or to meditate on God's Word. And then there's the one whose mind is, is open. That person is at all times willing to listen and to learn. He or she is never too proud or too busy to learn. And they listen in order to truly comprehend and to understand. God gives grace to those who hunger for His Word that, that they may truly understand His will and have the strength to live according to it. The challenge is for each and every one of us is do we truly hunger for God's Word? There's a lot of people who refuse to believe and understand. They've shut down. Jesus told His disciples that not everyone would understand His parables. So did Jesus mean to say that he was deliberately confusing or maybe hiding the meaning of the stories from those who were listening to him? Not very likely. Jesus was speaking from experience. He was aware that some who heard his parables refused them, refused to understand them. And it was not only that they, 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 not, that they could not intellectually understand them, but rather their hearts were literally closed to what Jesus was saying. They had already made up their minds not to believe. And God can only reveal the secrets of His kingdom, that which is hidden to the spiritually blind, to those who hunger for God and humbly submit to His truth. So what can make us ineffective or even unresponsive to God's Word? Well, it's obvious. In today's world of technology, there's all kinds of distractions. Preoccupation with other things can truly distract us from what is truly important and worthwhile. And letting our hearts and our minds be consumed with, with technology, with, with material things, can easily oppress us and weigh us down and draw us away from that heavenly treasure that lasts for eternity. My brothers and sisters, God's Word can only take deep root in a receptive heart which is truly docile and ready to hear what God has to say, and we need silence to hear what He's whispering, to listen with the ear of our heart. I'll say it again. Spell it H-E-A-R-T. To hear what God has to say. How God's Word takes root in us is up to us. He loves us so much, He gives us free will. Our attitude could be, Quius Deus, who is like unto God, or like Lucifer, Satan, non serving I will not serve, I will not listen. The parables of Jesus will enlighten us if we truly approach them with an open mind, with a receptive heart, ready to let Him change us. If we approach, if we approach them with the, the conviction that we already know the answer, then we too may look but not see, listen but not hear and really understand. God's Word can only take root in a receptive heart that is truly ready to believe and willing to submit. The challenge is, do we submit to God's Word? Do we do it with trust and with utter obedience? One lesson from this parable is very clear. The harvest is surely to come. The harvest will surely come. And while some seed will fall by the wayside and some fall on shallow ground never to, to, to mature, some will be choked to death by the thorns and nonetheless a harvest will come. The seed that falls on good soil, on the heart that is receptive, will reap abundant fruit. God is always ready to speak to each and every one of us and to give us understanding of His Word. Are we truly hungry for His Word? Do we allow anything to keep us from submitting to God's Word with joy, with trust, and with obedience? He's always sowing, and we are organic, and, and our spirituality should always be growing and blossoming. Jesus came to establish His kingdom. He desires that the seed of His truth, love, and mercy truly take root and grow in every heart, in every family, and in every community. With absolute confidence, he is always sowing, knowing that his kingdom will endure and will withstand any and all obstacles 
the gates of hell will not prevail. As where the seed falls and what type of soil it takes root in, well, this is entirely up to us. That's our choice. He wants the soil of our hearts to be fertile. And since the kingdom of Christ is alive and is always taking root and growing, how in your heart, my heart, how in our hearts is this soil? Is it rocky, thorny, or is it rich and ready to receive? What do you hear? Are you listening? What is it that you see? Jesus' presence and the words he spoke were, they were appealing. They were enthralling. They were mesmerizing for many of the Pharisees and the Sadducees and others who listened. He spoke of the mysteries of heaven using these parables. Not to convince minds, but to open and to change minds and to open hearts. He's inviting us to recognize him in his lordship, not as a forceful commander, but as a gentle, hidden, and quiet presence within the recesses of each of our hearts. Do we truly understand? To anyone who has, more will be given, and he will grow rich. From anyone who has not, even what he has will be taken away. As the seed of his word dwelling within us, we are called to bear fruit and to yield. And from the seed, the word that is, is heard and understood bears in our hearts fruit that is out of proportion to its humble beginning and our, our own efforts. My brothers and sisters, this truth reminds us that our faithfulness to the movements of grace within our souls has eternal consequences. Souls that are filled with Christ's love are spreading God's goodness far and wide. And the full effects will only be known, not here, but we'll see it in heaven. In our daily endeavors, as we plod through this pilgrimage called life, through the ordinariness of life, let us always labor with the hope of future fruits for the kingdom of Christ. May our hearts be open to receive. May our ears be open to hear and to listen. Amen? Better to come, Elizabeth. I invite you now to stand with me as we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, come substantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, we who have received God's mercy humbly ask for the needs of our church and our world, that every believer be fertile soil, for the growth of God's word, we pray to the Lord. Lord, our God, our That every land rejoice in plenty, foreshadowing the harvest to be shared in heaven, we pray to the Lord. Lord, our God, our For those who suffer from physical and spiritual hunger, they be filled with healing goodness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, our God, our That farmers and all who work the earth receive a just wage and abundant harvest, we pray to the Lord. For all of us gathered here in community, that we would seek ways to reach out and love to those who are alone, we pray to the Lord. Amen. Father, for all our family, friends, and parishioners who are suffering physically, emotionally, psychologically, and spiritually, for those who are battling addictions, for those who are recovering from surgeries, and those who will undergo surgery, we beg you to send healing of mind, body, and soul. We pray in a special way. 
for Beth Langan, Chad Madden, Lorraine LaFontaine, Warren Gardner Messina, Bowden Vandell, Carlene Parisian, Ken and Laurie LaRock, James and Marlene McCoy, Connor Zach, George and Ellie Leon, Bruce Parisian, Lonnie Allery, Marlon Moran, Brock Kaplan, Della Hurt, Mark Robinson, Becky Boyer, Lori Mando, Judy LaFerlita, Judy Ratness, Richard Plessity, Jim McLean, Alexander Trosso, Eleanor Gustafson, Tessie Laframboise, Maxine Gourneau, Delcy Jerome, Conrad Parisian, Bobby Dunwoody, Bill and Becky Stats, Faye Howell, and Jimmy Finney. For these, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord. Lord. Father, for those who have died through the night and those who will die this day, especially those who die a sudden, a violent or an unprepared death, we beg you to have mercy on their souls. For all our deceased family and friends, that they may truly rest in your peace. And we beg you, Lord, release every soul in purgatory, these future saints, that they may join you, the church triumphant in heaven, and thus intercede for us, the church militant, in this ongoing spiritual battle for the salvation of souls. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord. Let us pray in a special way for the repose of the souls of Marie Wilkie, Deacon Neil Squitieri, and James Larson, that they may rest in the peace of Christ. We pray to the Lord. We pray in a special way for Archbishop Joseph Fiorenzen and for Father Henry Quayla, who have succumbed to the COVID-19. We pray to the Lord. In a special way in gratitude for Father Gregory Crane, who went over and beyond at Trinity Hospital. We had a situation where a mother went in to give birth. Two months premature for this child. He dropped and ran. I called all over my life and found this, this priest of one year was willing to go and to administer the sacraments and baptize this child. In gratitude to Father Gregory and his vocation, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord Lord. We pray for a swift end to this pandemic. We pray, Father, for an end to the pandemonium that afflicts our country and our world. We beg you to send forth legions of angels to bring all excellent darkness into the light to illuminate people to the truth. We beg you to heal those who are as sick of mind, body, and soul. We pray, Lord, for all caregivers and first responders throughout this country. Guard, guide, and protect them and their families. Almighty, ever living God, you give life to all people. You bring healing to body and soul. I beg you to look with compassion on those who do not yet know you and those who do not love you. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions of our pro-popo, all parishioners living and deceased, for whom this holy sacrifice is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious, merciful, loving God and Father, you are the Father of all providence. We beg you today to send forth an abundance of the gifts of the Holy Spirit, that our ears be open to hear, our hearts be open to receive. Strengthen us with the gift of perseverance and grant peace and security to all who call on your name. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Alleluia. Qui aquem meru isti potare, Alleluia. Resurrexit, sit cotixit, Alleluia. Ora pro nobis Deum, Alleluia. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God. For the mysteries of this water and wine that we can be sharing with the baby Christ, and we himself to share our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God, with humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by your Lord. May our sacrifice and your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, Lord, from my neck, cleanse me from my sins.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Praise and glory of his name. For our good and good of all, his holy church. Look upon the offerings of the church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you, and grant that when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in goodness you created man, and when he was justly condemned, in mercy you redeemed him through Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, Lord, the fault of all hearts. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and John our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. That with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. gloria <laughs> Per omnia secula seculorum. Amen. The Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, and the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, 
My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other a safe distance sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, through your death gave life to the world, free me by this your most holy body and blood from all my sins and permit the evil, keep me always faithful to your commandments, and never let me be parted from you. Eche on you's day. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my room. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe. The sparrow finds a home, and the swallow a nest for her young. By your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God, blessed are they who dwell in your house forever singing your praise. For those who are watching virtually, let us make an active spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things. And I desire to receive you into my soul, since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally. Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you.
gifts we pray, O Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effects upon us may grow through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Please bow your heads for God's blessing. May Almighty God always keep every adversity far from you, and in his kindness pour out upon you the gifts of his blessing. Amen. May God keep your hearts attentive to his words, that they may be filled with everlasting gladness. Amen. And so may you always understand what is good and right, and be found ever hastening along in the path of God's commands, made co heirs with the citizens of heaven. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Please join me in our prayer of consecration to the two hearts. Most sacred heart of Jesus and most immaculate heart of Mary, you want in purpose as you desire the salvation, holiness, and sanctity of each soul. We, the people of the Turtle Mountain, consecrate ourselves and our families to you, seeking your victory both in our hearts and the world. May the river of the Father's divine love and mercy flow through your hearts into our hearts and through our hearts into the world. We acknowledge the perfection of your mercy, the abundance of your provision, and the supreme sovereignty of the Father's divine will. We desire to be part of your triumphant reign through our yes to holy and divine love. We wish with the help of your grace to live out this consecration now and for eternity. Amen. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, or sought thy intercession, was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, I fly unto thee, O Virgin of Virgins, my mother. To thee do I come before thee I stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not my petition, but in thy mercy hear and answer me. Amen. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the divine power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the other evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Remember to pray hard, pray well, pray all. Save souls, don't lose your in the process, and tell the devil to go to hell. Amen? Amen. All in all, have a God glory say just a reminder, we have this year on the 18th, starting the 136th consecutive novena to St. Anne. Take the brochure home, you'll notice in there on Monday the 20th, there will be a healing service, 715 St. Benedict's in, in Belfort, and then on Tuesday night here at St. John 715, we'll have exposition of the Blessed Sacrament and anointing of the sick. Okay? Nanani! Manitomi go show any mate, May God be great and bless you. Thank you for joining us. Let's hold each other in prayer. I love you, Mom. Be well. <laughs>